we know now that um, the JAK inhibitors, Janus kinase inhibitors, tofacitinib, and baricitinib, which is under review by the FDA and approved by the European Medicine Agency, both were better than methotrexate in early rheumatoid arthritis, clinically and structurally. We know that other biologics, such as tocilizumab, Actemra, was better than methotrexate in early disease. So the question will be, are there patients we should start these therapies instead of methotrexate initially? Would the higher risk patient be better off if long term, or does it not really make a difference? And this data would suggest it doesn't make a difference because you've got six months of grace and then you can start your therapy. So I think that's going to be a discussion which continues in the future. It's really a cost economic uh, discussion because uh, the cost of these drugs are so expensive. If you can select out that third of patients who do just very well with methotrexate alone, you probably save the healthcare system a tremendous amount of money. The clinical trial data, this, particularly this trial and other trials like SWIFOT and other trials, supports the guidelines uh, from the professional societies, which suggest starting a conventional synthetic DMARD uh, initially. And so all of those guidelines are evidence-based and based on studies of this nature. So for now, the paradigm we're using will be what we'll continue with until we have future data sets which suggest that maybe we need to rethink it. The good news is that there's still a number of new therapies under development for rheumatoid arthritis. What we lack in rheumatoid arthritis, that's a critical deficiency, is we lack treatment biomarkers. So we lack a marker saying this patient's going to respond to TNF inhibition. This patient's going to respond to T-cell activation inhibition. We don't have that. We're very jealous of our oncology colleagues who are really way ahead of us in genetic testing and biomarker testing to sort of tailor or personalize their therapy. Hopefully we'll get there. We spent a lot of money looking for about treatment of biomarkers, but it's so far been unsuccessful. There's a lot of development continuing uh, in looking at small molecules which block signal transduction. We have the JAK inhibitors. Uh, there's a lot of work going on now looking at <clears throat> brute and tyrosine kinase inhibitors, BTK inhibitors, which in theory make a lot of sense, blocking B cell activation, antigen presentation, and so forth. Um, I think we're going to see more combination therapy again. We sort of were concerned about using combination therapy. We did that in the past with combination biologics. Saw no added efficacy, even though animal model, animal model suggested that, but we saw more toxicity. But there is some scientific rationale in some of these small molecules and blocking more than one signal transduction pathway. So I think we're going to see that and also some of these antibodies that we call dual variable domain antibodies that one FAB portion may block one cytokine, another may block another cytokine. So I think combination therapy is coming. Uh, we need to be developing therapies for our treatment resistant patients, uh, come up with novel ideas, being willing to maybe accept more toxicity to try to lead to improvement in those patients.